Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the Mount Shuksan artwork that I did. Interestingly, while this mountain artwork looks a lot different than my first mountain tutorial, it uses a lot of the same basic concepts to create. So let's get started. The Burn Strokes There are two major burn strokes I use to create the mountain texture, zigzags and circular motion. Zigzags are lines burned in an up-down or left-right motion. Using the razor edge of the shader produces very thin lines. The flat of the shader produces much thicker zigzag lines. When burning zigzags on the mountain, I burn them more like lightning bolts. The thin ones are used to create cracks that give the mountain a rugged and often jagged appearance. The fat ones are used to give the mountain color and help give it shape. Circular motion is literally a chain of small circles. I use the flat of the shader so that I get solid or gapless circles when I'm burning. Circular motion is burned over an area to give it more tonal variety. The left peaks. We will begin by burning over the trace lines for the mountain. Burn them to a medium tan color. Is this step absolutely necessary? No. I tend to burn over trace lines so I can erase the pencil marks. This is a personal preference and you can do what you prefer. I want to point out that I did not burn over the trace lines on the snow. In the upper right corner is the reference photo. I increased the brightness a lot on it to see the details on the assorted peaks. We are going to start out burning in the little rock outcroppings to a brown color, somewhere in the medium to dark brown range. Use whatever pen tip works best for you on these small rocks. This leftmost group of peaks have sheared off sides, so they are mostly smooth on their left side, at least from the distance that we can see them. Work one section at a time, starting with the shadows. Burn the shadows to a dark brown or black color. I find it very helpful to think about where the light is coming from when creating art. The light determines where the highlights and the shadows are. I think the light on this mountain is coming from the left. The yellow circle is my indicator of where the light is. A lot of times I will put a little stickum on the board so it's a physical reminder to me of where that light source is. Since the light is on the left, the sheared left side of these peaks should be lighter in color than the right side. I am using a combination of long burn strokes and short zigzags to create the texture on these peaks. Both burn strokes are created using the flat of the shader. Occasionally I use the razor edge to create like a little crevasse or crack or whatever they call them. The peaks in this area aren't super jagged, so they mostly just need some color that has a bit of variety to it. Also, I decided to leave out the snow on the rocks. I didn't think it was looking right. You can add the snow in your artwork and see what you think. To add the snow, just don't burn over the area you want the snow to be. More details about creating snow will be discussed in the snow chapter that will happen later in this video. I am not following the reference photo exactly. Instead, 
I am using the reference photo as a guideline for how the mountain is shaped. The texture on each peak is created randomly versus a planned design. Or to put it another way, I allow the burn strokes to create the texture versus trying to exactly replicate the photo. Ignore the fact that other parts of the mountain have been burned in. I'm grouping the sections together in each chapter. At some point, the snow will appear in various stages of completion, but all of the snow video clips will be put into one chapter that will be near the end of the video. The last thing that we will do in this chapter is burn a medium tan band of color along the skyline next to the snow. This will allow us to see the upper edge of the snow. Rotate the board so your pen tip stays in optimal position when burning along the skyline. We do not want to burn over the snow. The Highest Peaks Start on the left side of the mountain and burn over the trace lines. The lines mark the location of cracks or crevices, or is it crevasses? I'm not too sure, so I'm going to call it cracks because I can pronounce that. So as I said, the lines mark the location of cracks. The right side of the line should be much lighter in color than the left side. After the lines are burned in, fill in the area with zigzags. The zigzags should be burned in the direction that the mountain slopes. The slope is not constant. Some areas the slope is almost vertical, and other areas have a slant. The angle you burn the lines on the slope will determine how steep the slope looks. As you burn in the zigzags, use the flat of the shader to give the area color. Use the razor edge of the shader to create more cracks. The more cracks the mountain has, the more rugged it will look. As I burn the zigzags, I keep the lines close together. For really dark burns, there is very little, if any, gaps between the lines on the zigzag strokes. In addition to the zigzag burn stroke I use on the mountain, I also use some circular motion. I use that to burn over the area to add a little tonal variety. Tonal variety is important because it is what creates the impression of the rocky, rugged characteristics of the mountain. As I work on the mountain, I do not have a very high setting on my burner. The heat is set just to the point where I get a medium to dark tan burn result. From there, I can use hand speed, zigzag line closeness, and reburning to create a large tonal variety. As I said before, I am not trying to replicate the reference photo exactly. Instead, I'm using it as a guide to help me with the general shape of the mountain. In an effort to simplify the mountain, I've made some deliberate changes. First, I omitted the little patches of snow on some of the mountain because they weren't looking like snowy patches to me in my artwork. I altered tonal values to increase the contrast between sections on the mountain. Generally, that meant making the front edge of a section lighter than what the reference photo showed. Another alteration is that I allowed the random nature of zigzags and circular motion to help create most of the mountain texture. The further I got into this artwork, the more I allowed this to happen. I mentioned before that you should burn the zigzags in the slope direction of the mountain. This guideline applies to every small peak, ridge line, cliff, 
and everything else that creates the overall mountain shape. For example, look at the ridge that is circled in yellow. This ridge was created by angling the burn strokes towards the top of the ridge. Since both sides of the ridge are visible, you need to angle the burn marks on each side up towards the top of the ridge. The angle you burn the lines at will determine how steep the ridge appears. Obviously, the closer to vertical that you are burning the lines, the steeper the ridge will appear. The Center Peak When working on the small rock outcroppings, it might be easier to use a writer pen tip instead of a shader. We ended the last chapter talking about the need to burn the zigzags towards the top of each peak, ridge, or cliff, whatever the feature is. Like I said before, if both sides of a feature, like a ridge, are visible, then each side needs to be angled towards the top of that feature. Now I want to mention that the angle the lines are burned in do not need to be identical. Changing that angle while burning in the feature will make it look more realistic and it will add more variety to the mountain. As I said before, you want a lot of tonal variety on the mountain. Don't forget about your light source. The light source plays an important role with the shadows. The sun in this artwork is on the left, so the shadows are on the right side of every crack, ridge, crevasse, cliff, etc. Also, the shadows on the right side will be darker than those on the left. An example of this would be the numerous cracks that I've created on the peaks. Cracks that are on the right side of a ridge or cliff or whatever will be darker than those on the left. As you work, there is one thing I would recommend, and that is to use contrast to help areas stand out. The highest point on the center peaks is marked with a yellow arrow. On the reference photo, this high point is darker than the range of peaks behind it. I chose to ignore that. Instead, I made this peak lighter in color. The area behind it is darker, so that provides contrast to help this peak stand out. This is another example of how I am purposely deviating from the reference photo. As I said before, I'm using the reference photo as a guideline for the general shape of the mountain. I am not trying to create an exact replica of the photo. Let's recap the guidelines. First, determine the light source as it controls the shadows. If need be, put a physical reminder on your board like a little stickum to remind you where that sunlight is coming from. With this artwork, the light is on the left so the right side of features will be shadowed. Features include cliffs, ridges, peaks, etc. The top of the mountain will be lighter in color than the bottom. Set the heat on your burner to get a medium to dark tan burn result. Then use hand speed, line closeness, and reburning to control the darkness levels. There are two burn strokes used for creating the mountain, zigzags and circular motion. Circular motion is used over an area just to give it tonal variety. Zigzags are exactly what they sound like, a line that is burned in a up, down, or back and forth motion. I use the flat of the shader to fill in and color the mountain. I use the razor edge of the shader to create dark, thin cracks. Altering the angle you hold that razor edge will determine how thick or thin 
those cracks appear. The more cracks the mountain has, the more rugged it will appear. Keep a small gap between the lines on the zigzags. In really dark areas, eliminate the gap between the zigzag lines. Burn zigzags in the slope direction of a feature. For example, if you are working on a ridge, then burn the lines towards the top of that ridge. If both sides of a feature, like a ridge, are visible, then the zigzag lines on both sides of the ridge need to angle up towards the top of the feature. The angle you burn the lines determines how steep that feature will appear. Vary the angle of the lines that are burned on one feature. Just don't get too extreme. It probably wouldn't look right to have some 90 degree lines right next to 45 degree lines. As you can see, I've switched to a writer pen tip and I'm burning some short, dark cracks over the peaks. The lines I'm burning are seldom straight. Sometimes I'm scribbling or burning lines that squiggle or curl, straighten, and loop back on itself. Basically, I'm burning a wide variety of line types. I cannot think of anything new to tell you. The next chapter will cover all of the mountain peaks to the right of this one. I will not be providing voiceover for that chapter. The chapter after that will cover the lower area and I will come back and discuss a few things about that area. So enjoy the music, and I'll be back soon. The Right Peaks There's no voiceover for this chapter.
the lower peaks. These bottom peaks on the left are backlit. The sun is behind them, so the side that we see is in shadows. Make sure to burn this area darker than the peaks behind them. In addition to the circular motion and zigzags that I have been using all along on the mountain, I started using pull-away strokes along the ridge line marked with a yellow arrow. The pull-away strokes are burned along the top of this ridge line. The stroke starts at the top and gets pulled down towards the bottom. I make sure to alter the color of the strokes. Then I use zigzags to give the area more texture, color, and shape. As before, the circular motion is used to add more tonal variety to the area. Since I am burning almost vertically, the area is very steep looking. The reference photo probably isn't as steep as what I am doing. But like I said before, I am not trying to create an exact replica of the photo. I mentioned before that the angle you burn at will determine how steep an area appears. Vertical or near vertical burns will make areas appear very steep, like cliffs. Horizontal or near horizontal burns will appear as plateaus and gently curving hills. You can also create ledges and walking trails just by burning in a more horizontal direction. One thing to keep in mind when creating gentle hills, plateaus, ledges, etc. is that the shadows will not be as dark. Also, don't burn as many dark thin cracks as that conveys a rugged texture not generally associated with hills and plateaus. The area circled with yellow is a gently sloping hill. I'm using the flat of the shader to burn wide bands of color that follow the slight angle of that hill. The distant trees are created by first burning a thin vertical line. Then, zigzags are burned down the length of the tree. The zigzags start at the top and are very small and gradually increase in size or width as you near the bottom. I am using the razor edge of the shader for this, but a writer pen tip might be easier. There is a plateau that has a patch of snow on it. I marked it with a yellow arrow. I did not create a snow patch on my artwork. Instead, I just burned in the area a few shades lighter than the surrounding rock. Other than the snow patch and the gently sloping hill, there isn't anything unusual or out of the ordinary with the front peaks. The very last thing that I did was use a writer pen tip and burn in a number of small trees along these peaks. The trees were created just like the first group. So burn a vertical line and then burn zigzags over that line. The zigzags get a little bit bigger the closer to the ground you get. Well, that's it for the mountain. Let's move on to creating snow. The snow. First off, make sure the heat on your burner is set to get a medium tan burn result or lighter. The key to the snow is the extreme contrast between the snow and the dark mountains. The color of the snow needs to stay a number of shades lighter than the mountains are. Begin by lightly blocking in the shadows as marked by the pencil lines. Keep these shadows in the light to medium tan range. Right now, our immediate goal 
is to get the shadows dark enough so that the pencil lines are no longer needed. Once you reach that state, then rub a pencil eraser over the area to remove any residual graphite. Watch how I touch the pen tip to the dark mountain before I resume working on the snow. Blotting the pen tip like this removes any excess heat and that helps prevent dark blotches from occurring when you first start burning. As I burn in the shadows, I am using circular motion, zigzags, and uniform strokes. The exact burn stroke really doesn't matter. What is important is to keep the color of the shadows much lighter in color than the mountain. When working on the snow, I highly recommend checking with the reference photo often. As you can see on the reference photo, there are areas where the snow looks smooth and pristine. These areas are often surrounded by sections where the snow has broken off, revealing just how thick that snowpack is. The edge or side of the snowpack is where the shadows are located. These shadows are what give the snow shape and realism. Now that the shadows are blocked in and the pencil marks erased, it is time to reburn the shadows as needed. Some of the pristine snow patches have sharp edges, and others have rounded, softer edges. Plus, the shadows are not uniform in color. During the reburning, I'm trying to put a lot of texture into the shadows. To do this, I am using the same techniques that I did with the mountain. The major difference is that I am making sure to keep all of my burn strokes in the tan range. The other difference is that I am burning the zigzags in the direction that the snow is sliding so most of the burn strokes are angled in the same general direction. As you work, be aware that the position of the sun has an impact on the shadows. The sun in this artwork is on the left, so shadows are being cast along the right. This means that snow along the right side of a mountain peak will be shadowed. Snow along the left side of a mountain peak will most likely be sunlit, but that also depends on where the snow is located. If it's down in the bottom of a valley, it will probably be shadowed all the way around. You probably noticed that the artwork changed in its level of completion. I am grouping each section of snow together working my way from left to right on the artwork. Each section begins the same. Lightly block in the shadows. Then, erase the pencil marks when they are no longer needed. After that, reburn over the shadows to darken and give them texture. I highly recommend burning in the mountains before you work on the snow. I had to do a lot more reburning because I burned in parts of the snow and then burned in the mountain. Once the dark mountain was in place, it became quite obvious that the shadows on the snow needed to be darker. So save yourself the extra work and burn in the mountain first. The other thing I highly recommend is to build up the color slowly. Use a low heat setting on your burner and then reburn several times over the shadows to create the details and the tonal depth. Rushing to get the job done quickly usually means that the overall quality of the artwork decreases. So slow down and create your best art. The sky. I'm going to tell you now, my sky is a mess. 
I started out by drawing some rounded top of cloud shapes. Then I used circular motion to burn above the pencil line. Afterwards, I burned in the clouds, leaving a band next to the pencil line much lighter in color. Next, I added another layer of clouds and repeated the whole process. I really wasn't pleased with how this was looking. The mountain and the snow have a lot of texture and detail in them, and I felt like my clouds had too much going on and it was competing with the mountain and the snow instead of enhancing it. I tried a number of things to fix this. I even tried erasing the sky and starting over. That didn't really work very well. In the end, I tried to fill the sky with gradient shading that was darkest next to the snow and got gradually lighter towards the top of the board. I used circular motion and uniform strokes as my burn methods. If I were to do this over, I would not bother with clouds. Instead, just fill the board with gradient shading that is darker along the horizon, so next to the mountain and the snow, and let it get gradually lighter towards the top of the board, or keep it the same color throughout the sky. The last thing I will mention is that burning uniform strokes can be a lot easier if you burn with the grain line. Also, pulling the pen tip towards yourself produces smoother and more consistent burn results. The plywood that I am burning on has a horizontal grain line, so rotating the board allows me to burn with the grain line and pull the pin tip towards myself. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you liked the tutorial. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of the tutorial along with a free downloadable pattern and the reference photo for the artwork. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.